Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? It is Lasty here. Welcome to episode number 92 of The Road to Glory here on FIFA 19 Ultimate Team. So, where we're going back to on this episode, it's actually going to be like Saturday afternoon to evening. Uh, because I needed to make sure that I got all my weekend lead done or finished by the end of Saturday. It was my dad's birthday over the weekend. Needed to take some time out on Sunday for family and all of that good stuff. I'm sure you guys can understand. So it was a pretty busy Saturday. Now, um, with all of this stuff, we've got Footmas coming out every day. So in a couple of days' time, I will have caught up with uh, whatever the Footmas stuff is, like the Firminos and whatnot, and whatever's after him in the next couple of days. So uh, look forward to that, and I will be potentially getting people like that for the road to glory. Um so I bought a couple of Daniel Vasses because uh, for the day before Firmino, there was a chance that maybe uh, Danish players, like, well, Vass actually got one, didn't he? But uh, it was whether or not, I I saw that his price was starting to go up and I was like, mm, maybe we could make some money in the hype here. Uh, and that's exactly what we do. And I'll show you uh, what profit we made in just a second. Uh, but it allowed me, because I was storing some stuff in unassigned, to actually uh, open some packs. I did the marquee matchups, literally bought a couple of items and then I was able to complete the, the stuff with the, with the rest of the things that were in my club. Uh, it's not the greatest marquee matchups this week. I've, uh, I'm pretty sure I've been quite vocal on that. Uh, however, it would be nice to get something good from the packs. Now, unfortunately, we don't. But later on in the video, we will most definitely will get a pretty decent pack. Um, one of my better ones so far on, on the game this year. Something that I've not actually had before, which, as the title suggests, we get two informs. In a pack, so it's pretty good. I haven't actually had that at all this year, even on my main account. Uh, but we did get a Terrera, and this was literally during the time where Terrera was nearly going out of packs, uh, or nearly going out of the SBC. So I was able to sell him for 5.5k whilst he was still expensive, which was brilliant. Uh, meaning that marquee matchups actually kind of did make a little bit of profit. Uh, because all you need is one or two players like that, and, and you're in the money. Um, so you know what the team is looking like. Uh, it is... It's pretty much time uh, to, to take ourselves into the weekend league. I wanted to make sure that both Martinez and Torreira, which are both of the players we worked on unlocking and getting in the last episode, were actually at least on my bench. And also Marcus Alonso can make his way back onto the bench as well. Now that he's been upgraded to an 86, it means that we're probably going to be bringing on different substitutes during our games. Uh, time to go into my next weekend league match then. So as you guys know, I started at 3-0. and zero, And that's where we're carrying on from right now. Uh, first match against Red Alisson, Red Moy, Mui or Moy, however you, yes, Aaron Moy, isn't it? And then Futmus uh, Zaha. So we're going to start seeing a few Futmus cards and coming up against a few of them as well. No doubt about it. Um, I guess Firmino is going to be very popular. Like I'm recording this commentary on the night that he came out. So just last night for you guys. Uh, and I am definitely thinking about going ahead and unlocking him. Because you know how how much we've been using the regular version uh, during this series. He's played over 200 games I'm pretty sure. Maybe even nearly 300 games. I don't know. It's like kind of crazy. It might be over 300 games. Um, but... He's been incredible, so a plus two version of him would be a very smart move, I think. i just got to see what that price settles at and see if we've got the coins liquid and ready to go and you know, and it's not overpriced or anything. So uh, I shall see and you'll find out in a future episode. Um, I go 2-0 up against this guy after 30 minutes and uh, it was just another one of them finesse shots that always happens. However, he does get through to score a goal there with Lucas and I'm making this one a little bit hard on myself because... Well, actually, I don't know why, but I am making it difficult for myself. Uh, I really shouldn't be, considering that I've had like good pass accuracy, loads of shots on goal. For some reason, I'm letting him back into the game, which is exactly what I don't want to be doing. Uh, now, I missed the opportunity there with Bobby Firmino, and obviously my substitutes come on late game. It means Aubameyang pushes out wide. We have Pato on the field, uh, and he is able to stick that one in the back of the net. And I'm not going to lie, I absolutely love Pato. As a super sub, he is literally top tier for me always pretty much comes on and scores a goal really rate him he's a game changer in my opinion late game on on fifa 19 however i need to know whether or not you guys think flashback pato is better or that martinez that we unlocked is better because i've only got really space to bring one of them on uh, so i want to know which which one you think i should be bringing on as my super sub um i i, I know that 
thing is reliable. Pato's reliable, but is Martinez like more of a impact, actual decent super sub? Is he too small? Does Pato work out better? I don't know. I want to know your feedback in the comment section below. Um, so then before my next weekend league game, I was actually quite looking forward to getting stuck in with Torreira uh, or Torreira, however you pronounce his name. So I managed to fit him into my starting 11 and the chemistry didn't drop or anything. So that was good. It means Kante's made his way to the bench, which I know is like controversial because it's Kante, right? However, he's an untradeable for us and like I don't really mind that we're not playing him right now I'm interested to try a different card out and see how he performs on the game and know that I've got Kante to bring on as a sub always he's untradeable if he's not in my starting 11 he'll always be on the bench ready to come on and stuff so uh, I yeah I don't mind that we are or aren't using him now I actually take a long shot with Torreira and I don't know if it ends up going down as his goal because it took a massive deflection however I wouldn't have gone for that opportunity with Kante I would have worked the ball around and probably gone for a finesse shot as opposed to hitting a normal long shot because Torreira's actually got stats in that department whereas Kante hasn't. I love that finish as well by the way from uh, Usman Dembele. What an absolute thunderbolt of a goal that was uh, from the Frenchman. I'm really liking him. I'm really liking him. Like He's just genuinely good. He is not quite Neymar levels but he's a lot less expensive than the Brazilian. So uh, and as it's working in my team right now like, I'm, I'm actually really glad we got him and we're trying him out and stuff because it seems like money well spent spent on the game now um that's our fifth win of the weekend league and we can push on forward uh and we're at five and oh right now which is brilliant next opponent has a very good team though lots and lots of meta players in there and i was a bit worried i'm not gonna lie that just genuinely looks like the sort of team that i would come up and take a big fat l against you know uh, and actually he goes one nil up with de bruyne with a shot which i wouldn't necessarily have picked I would have gone for the finesse shot into the op opposing corner, or the opposite corner, um, and he hits that powerful shot into the roof of the net, near post, which is what I see the pros do all the time. So it got me a little bit worried that maybe he was quite a good player. Um, he then gets through another opportunity with De Bruyne, but it forces a good save out of Chesney, who's always been like a bit hit and miss for me. Like He's not the worst goalkeeper in the world, um, and I can't blame him for conceding that one either. I think mean, that took literally two deflections, one off both of my defenders, Defenders, which is uh, very unfortunate, but my opponent goes 2 0 up here. Now, uh, I lack Roquetta, play it back to Firmino, play it into Usman, and I can't be missing opportunities like that. If this is going to be a tough game, which it definitely is, I need to score the very minimal opportunities that I actually earn myself on this game. So um, I could tell that this one was probably going to be going down as my first loss of the weekend league, especially when that one from Lewandowski bangs into the back of the net. Uh, that's a GG, pretty much 3 0 down, but I didn't really want to quit. Uh, just because I wanted to earn the rivals points and stuff. Dembele plays it off to Pato and I am able to get a consolation goal. I don't think it lasts for long though. I'm pretty sure my opponent goes 4-1 up here. De Bruyne running into the box. Plays it across. Sweaty ball into Eden Hazard. Uh, you got to do what you got to do in the weekend league, don't you? And... Um yeah, we're 4-1 down. However, I think I get the ball with Salah here. Play it off. And Marcus Alonso, substitute, absolutely thunderbunt. I was going to say something else there. Thunder bolts it into the top of the net. Uh, but that doesn't matter either. Because his UCL human son runs down the other end and gets uh, gets that three-goal lead back to him. I think I scored once more after that. But I don't know. I've missed it out somewhere. Eventually, the result was 5-3. Uh, I take my first loss at 5-1. Next up then, this guy with this team, he's got an 87 upgraded UCL Fabinho, which I'm very jealous of. He's also got a Red Mares, which again, really jealous of. Uh, and that Mkhitaryan, I'm not going to lie, I should have done the SBC. I didn't really have the coins at my, dis uh, at my disposal at the time, but he looks good. And he's going to get better and better as Arsenal progress through the Europa League. So uh, I am a bit guided because of course that's a good link to Aubameyang, which is very useful. That's one of the reasons why we got Torreira. Uh, and I'm hoping that Torreira gets himself a nice little winter upgrade at some point, which could turn him into a bit more of a monster as well. And I have to say, I'm really loving him so far. I am loving this card. Uh, Footmas Torreira is probably one of the best value Footmas cards we will have gotten the whole time, just because he was 25k to do, uh, and he is genuinely, he's got more in-game stats than Kante and Fabinho. I know that he's a very different player than Fabinho, and I would still rate Fabinho higher as a DM. Um, but it's nice to have little and 
Sarge playing together because it means that Torreira can go on these little surging runs or use the pace that he's got at his disposal. Uh, and then Fabinho holds and does all of that stuff and uses the long legs to get the interceptions in and things. So I, I think it's working. Like Torreira's actually doing a Kante role for me on the game with a little bit more like prowess about him as he pushes forward up the pitch. I know he's got a long shot in him if I can make space for one. So I end up taking another L after that one, and I go from 5-0 and zero to 5-2. and two. Uh, And I'm not going to lie, this was one of the first times I think I've ever tweeted about the servers not feeling very good. Uh, even in the wins before what I got the losses, even, you know, even before I took my losses, the wins that bef were before that genuinely didn't feel that great on Ultimate Team. Uh, and I am not one to complain about the servers. I used to complain about my internet all the time. But the dedicated servers have never really been a problem for me. So uh, it was odd to, to get a couple of losses in a row and I just didn't feel I was able to play properly So I took a break moved on you will have seen that I sold my Jonas's and that I also sold those Vases that I bought for like 14 to 1800 for like 2500 or 3000 and he wasn't required in the end So I just sold into the hype before he came out uh, and you know made a little bit of money as opposed to potentially loads but actually, it would have been a massive loss, or a little bit of a loss, I guess, because he dropped down to discard value uh, after he wasn't required. So I then went ahead and did the Futmus Daily SBC or whatever it was to unlock myself a mega pack. And I had a lot of the stuff in the club, so I was like, yeah, I'll do this. So I pressed, uh, I pressed go on my mega pack, and I see that I'm getting a walkout. And I'm like, I can't remember what one of these looks like. Uh, and then I get excited because I see a team of the week. Uh, and then it turns out to be an 84 rated inform, which of course are walkouts. So that's a little bit lame, right? I, I wish that it was an 86 or above, but okay. Um, and I'm like, yes, brilliant. For like a few thousand coins, which I did this SBC for, I get a 20k plus 84 rated inform. That's brilliant. Nice one. Uh, good job, SBC. And then I open the pack and I find that there's a Sydney in there as well. So I get two informs in one pack, which is actually something I've not even done on my main account this year. I know it's not super rare, but to get that in a mega pack, I've had like way, way worse 100k packs on this game. So um, nice one. Both of those were over 20,000 coins. It means that we're going to uh, make a lot of profit from that SBC. Uh, we also got an 83 and an 82 in the pack, as well as some consumables and stuff. So all good there. So in what was a slightly say, uh, sour ending to the episode, I was going to say savory. I think that's more food related. I don't know. Uh, but in a slightly more sour end to the episode with the poor finishes in the foot champs, like the two losses in a row, we end up making up for it by getting two informs in one pack. And I am very happy with that. So the team's looking like this. I feel like at the very start of the next episode, I might make some changes. I may, might change this team around. We might say goodbye to a couple of people. We might say hello to a couple of very good people. So we'll see what happens. But it might not look the same. And we will... Uh, well, it definitely won't. I've recorded the episode already. I'm going to commentate it after this one. But tomorrow, yes, we will be changing our team. I'll be bringing in a nice new, very expensive player. As well as a couple of players in uh, in a position where we haven't really made many changes yet so far on the road to glory. We're going to get full chemistry again, guys. So uh, whatever that tells you, you might get a little bit of a hint from that. But anyway... Smash a like on the video. I've not given you a challenge yet today. Don't forget, this is, I think this is like the 17th. So it's 1,700 likes today, guys. I know that's a whopper of a challenge. If you can get anywhere near that, I would be really appreciative. Smash that thumbs up button. Hit that target. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Have a lovely day, everyone. I'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>